today I'm hoping to paint at Balanced Rock. This is kind of a popular or a well-known rock formation at Devil's Lake. And the only time that I've ever painted there was when Corbin showed me where to go. So she's dropping me off. She's not gonna be able to show me where to go today. So I'm gonna be kind of on my own trying to find. She has a lot to say. I'll what see it? you for Cookie Violet. So hopefully I'll be able to find this rock formation. And after the painting session, we're going to have this week's artwork of the week. And it's a small landscape painting by the Impressionist painter Henry Henschke. Balanced Rock Trail. And do you know where that is? I put it in my maps, my GPS. Yeah. across the railroad tracks and then up. All right, that's it's my really plan. Steep, I'm pretty sure. I think it is steep too. All right, thank you so much for bringing me here. Yes, Broski. I'll call you when it's time to come Do pick me up. you have service here? Yeah, I'll have service. Oh, it's nice out here. Hi to the people. Hi. Thank you for bringing me here. Yes. All right, let me get my stuff. Okay, here's a map. We're here, just like she said, go across the railroad tracks, which are right there, and take a little bit of a left, and we'll be right up there. You can see that balanced rock, that's kind of the formation of it. It's not far from the devil's doorway. Yeah, I just need to get right up there, and then I'll be able to see the balanced rock. Just gotta be mindful of my step so I don't slip. And we should be good. The balanced rock formation is right over here. Got a group of people from Madison right behind me. Oh, there it is. That was honestly not a bad hike at all. Very quick. But this little bit, I have to pay attention to what I'm doing because if you slip, you're going to have a problem. You want me to get a picture of both of you? Thank you. Of course. I just switched left. Where are y'all from? I'm just from Milwaukee. Oh, cool. I live right close to here. Hey, look at this. Balanced rock. Wait, let me get... Oh, wow. Professional. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want a picture? No, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, have a good hike. Likewise. Oh, so this is the end of the trail? It keeps going, I think. I don't actually know. Really? Yeah, we uh, might be off the trail at this moment. Yeah, actually, maybe. Right. Okay, you can see the little area right down there. That would be the best area to stand in, but I would be too close to it to do a sight size. I wouldn't be able to fit the whole balanced rock onto the panel, so I had to come right back up into here. And I'm kind of nestled in all these rocks, and I found a interesting little split place to stand, and we'll get this painting going by first mixing our colors on the palette. This morning I observed the subject while looking through these red lens glasses and that enabled me to observe balanced rock in terms of contrast. I then simplified the scene and made it into sort of a posterized view where the shapes that make up Balanced Rock and Devil's Lake are just large puzzle pieces or masses. From there, I, as I assigned a specific value to each one of the masses. This is the color that I mixed that is the lit up side of Balanced Rock. And you can see that, and that is exactly a 20% value. 
So I just put a little bit of that color right there. It's a 20% value. So I mixed all my colors according to the amount of contrast that I was observing in the scene. That's the way that I'm gonna be able to paint the light. All right, let's get started on the panel. This is as far as I'm gonna take this first little painting this morning. I can see one little thing that I need to touch up before I finish it off. Um, the sun came out. The first painting, this one, was kind of a shady morning condition. But now the sun has come out, and so I'm gonna start a second painting. I think I filmed the first portion of the painting. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but my GoPro was beeping at me and I hope I filmed it. Anyway, I'm gonna put this painting down. I got about an hour left of painting time this morning and we're gonna get a second one started. wrap up the painting session today. Corbin's about 10 minutes away from being back at the parking lot so I have to get my things together. The sun didn't hold out for me but you know that's okay. I kind of enjoyed the effect that I was able to capture on the canvas. This one has a really structural feel to it. Um, it's just all these facets of paint kind of give it a nice structure. I think I like the surface that I worked on as well. It's a canvas panel. Your friend is down there so Everybody's out at the lake today. It's just beautiful. Well, thanks so much for being here. Let's cut to the second half of the video where we're going to have that artwork of the week from Henry Henchy. Back out here at Devil's Lake for a little more painting. Let's check out the West Bluff Trail and see what there is to see.
artwork of the week, and as promised, it's this small landscape by the Impressionist painter Henry Henschey. I haven't looked at this painting much. It's been sitting in a box in my studio, but it's something that I got at an auction um, at the beginning of the summer. I think it was right before Violet was born. And um, it's just been a whirlwind of a summer, so I haven't really been able to take stock of it. But, but today I got a frame in and I wanted to make a short video showing the painting off and talking a little bit more about this week's featured artist, who is Henry Henschey. Uh, while I do that, I think I'm gonna pop it into a frame and get it up on the wall. All right, I've got the painting and I've also got this frame that I just had custom made by Roger at Franken Frames. It was, you can see this frame is actually a combination of a linen liner and then a very small profile ornate white frame with, and it has a nice gold liner as well. So we're gonna put the painting into the frame. And I had to order a special frame because it is a 10 inch by 14 inch painting. I would say a standard size would be an 11 inch by 14 inch painting. So there it is in the frame. I think it's a handsome presentation. The only thing that I might do is brush a little gold onto the profile of the wood part of the frame or the plaster part of the frame, but so far so good. I will wire the back of the frame and get the painting attached uh, in a more appropriate manner. But I think for now, let's just talk a little bit about the painting. So Henchy is one of my favorite artists and I'm pleased to have this landscape painting from him. I acquired this painting at an auction late in the spring or early in the summer. And I did a little bit of research about this painting and it was on auction back in 2017. And at that time there was a dark wooden frame that was included with the painting. That frame has since been discarded and I bought the painting unframed. Henry Henschey is a German artist, but I believe he was actually born in Chicago. In his early life, it said that he wanted to study and work with the architect Frank Lloyd Wright, which kind of has a local connection being that Frank Lloyd Wright's house, his masterpiece, Taliesin is only about 30 miles from where I'm standing right now. That's in Spring Green, Wisconsin. And I actually painted on the grounds of Taliesin during their centennial celebration back in 2011. Early in his artistic life, Henry Henschey wanted to study with Frank Lloyd Wright. Being that he was down in Chicago, he maybe had seen several of the houses that Frank Lloyd Wright had built in the Chicago area. Eventually, he made his way to the Art Institute of Chicago, where he studied traditional painting techniques, and those, of course, were the techniques of the old masters. But during those early years, he saw an exhibition of Impressionism, and you can imagine that there's a lot of Impressionism at the Chicago Art Institute, and he became very drawn to the end plein air paintings of the Impressionists. Eventually, he left the Chicago Art Institute, and he found his way out east. He studied at the Art Students League, among none other than the American Ashcan School painter, George Bellows. But Impressionism took him a little bit outside of New York City, and he went down to Provincetown to study with Charles Hawthorne. Hawthorne was teaching a different approach than you might learn in other art schools of the time. Instead of teaching in a drab studio under artificial light, Hawthorne would take his students outdoors. And this was important because he was teaching his students a different way of seeing and a way of painting that made use of his color note approach. You know, we can kind of think of the great father of Impressionism, Claude Monet. Oh, Claude Monet was a wonderful painter, but he was not a teacher. In fact, he wouldn't paint too often with anyone around him, besides maybe his stepdaughter and his neighbor, Theodore Robinson. William Merritt Chase was another painter who was alive at the time of Claude Monet, and he was a great teacher. Chase was teaching a lot of painters in America during that time, and he was a landscape painter, and his paintings are beautiful. He never understood the language of Impressionist painting quite as well as the French Impressionists. William Merritt Chase handed down a lot of the fundamental knowledge of the landscape to Charles Hawthorne. 
Hawthorne took it further. He kind of combined Monet's ideas with William Merritt Chase's ideas. And then in steps a young Henry Henchy, who rapidly worked his way up at Charles Hawthorne's Cape Cod School of Art and became a painting assistant. Eventually Hawthorne died and Henry Henchy, I don't know if he took over the school or if he bought the school or if he just kept teaching in the same town, Provincetown, as Hawthorne. But at some point, Henry Henchy was the painting teacher. His work as a painter was to advance painting with the idea of color. He was interested in visual poetry in the same way that Claude Monet was. I know that through online discussions on chat rooms and through painting forums and things like that, people genuinely don't always understand the coloration that's present in Henshi's paintings. And I think that that comes down to people just being people. If you're used to seeing paintings that were created in the style of the old masters, where you would create a deliberate imprimatura or grisaille underpainting, and paintings that were created under studio lighting, you might not be used to seeing something like we have present in Henshi's work. And it seems to me that people would try to, try to discredit the work of Henry Henshi for that reason. Now, in my opinion, a better approach would be to view every artwork as if it's the first time seeing any artwork and remaining open to the idea that change happens. Change has happened in artwork. In my opinion, Henry Henschey is a great step forward in art making, and I think that we're all better off for him having been such a prolific teacher and painter. Things change in our lives all the time, and things change in painting as well. I'm guessing this painting was made maybe in the 1960s, but it looks modern today. It looks as fresh today as the day that he painted it. And to me, that shows that it's a important piece of work. I don't think this is Henchy's greatest masterpiece of all time, but Henchy's greatest masterpieces of all time don't often go to the auction. But it is a Henchy landscape and for that, I am very happy. A legacy that he left behind, he's written two books. I have one on my bookshelf right now. It's a series of notes collected by his students. You can find that book on Amazon. He has another book that was published before this book that is very rare. I read that book in 2010. I got it through interlibrary loan from the University of Wisconsin but that copy of the book that I read actually came from the Harvard Library. Since then, Harvard no longer loans that book out, and you can buy a copy of that book. The lowest price I've seen is maybe $300, and I think that there's a copy on Amazon right now that's $1,100. I don't think it's necessary that you go out and buy that book if you want to learn more about the Henry Henschey painting technique, or just the Henry Henschey observation technique is maybe more accurate. I think you could easily track down a PDF online that teaches all about his color study methods. And if you just Google Henry Henschey PDF, I'm sure that that'll come up. Let's take one last look at the painting. You can see a beautiful ornamental tree with some kind of flower garden below it. One thing that's interesting to me is the layering of paint to depict the shadows. It looks like he started with that violet or purple tone and then he worked some greens on top of that, some dark greens, and then some more uh, sap greens or greens that were mixed with some yellow on top of that. And that long shadow, he even included some blue there. That long shadow travels to the left side of the painting and up a wall or some greenery there so that shadow is cast and it kind of crawls up the wall. We have the neighbor's house over on the side. One thing that you can't see is maybe the color of the sky. We do have some crack allure present in this painting. And again, looking back at that ornamental tree. This painting was mainly constructed and worked on with a palette knife. This is maybe his preferred method. 
And I would guess that maybe it was a three or four session painting. I don't really feel like this painting is overworked, but I do think that it was resolved. Paintings work for reasons that they work, and I think that this one has a beautiful quality of light and a beautiful impressionist touch. This is the verso of the painting. This was unfortunately painted on a Grumbacher canvas board, so not the most archival of materials, but it is signed on the verso as well, Henry Henschey. You can see I need to wire the painting up, but that's gonna do it for this week. Thanks so much for sticking with me. I'm gonna finish the video up and get it uploaded. We'll do this again soon. And uh, more to come on Henry Henschey, okay? This isn't our last time talking about Henschey on this channel. I'm a big fan. One reason I am a big fan is that when I went out to visit with Dan Corey in 2010, that was the first time that I had ever heard about Henry Henschey. Dan kind of filled me in about him. And not to say that Dan was a major fan about him, but we were just talking about painters. And that trip, my eyes were open to the world of plein air painting and impressionism and just not even plein air painting, just painting in general. We went and saw a Colin Page opening at the Dowling Walsh Gallery. We saw the artwork of Tolef Runquist. We saw paintings by Connie Hayes. And the whole trip was just a magical time. We painted at the Rockport Pier. Um, we painted in a bunch of different harbors painting. We painted lobster boats in a bunch of different harbors. And to me, it was just a magical time, spending time following Dan around. And he was a great host. And that time of my life was really important. That's when I found out about Henshi. And I guess I just kind of latched on to him. And I like him for some of those reasons as well as his artistic reasons. So this isn't gonna be the last time we talk about Henshi on this channel but I'm gonna wrap the video up here and we'll do this again soon.